What's up guys, Thurs Cousin here. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can set up your VS Code for React to code like a senior developer. Cool, so let's begin. Let's first look at what theme am I using because this is something that you guys have been asking a lot. So I'm gonna go here to my settings and do theme and this is the theme. I'm using the material theme darker theme and I believe that you have to get this theme by installing an extension. So you go here to extensions and I think it's the material theme, there you go material theme you want to get this extension then you install it it's going to give you access to some new themes you press here set color theme and then you have all of these options the one that i'm using is material theme docker then if i go to my font type font let's see what pops up i am using the menlo monaco courier new monospace font i did not set this up this is the default font that came with vs code i am on mac so this might be different on windows but there you go now you have my theme and my font and i'm also going to put these in the description of all of my future videos so that you guys can always know the fonts and the theme that i'm using cool so let's now move on to some actual important stuff let me show you the snippets that i currently use for react so here we have a component it's just a demo component and let's assume that now we want it to have state i can just press us press tab and it's going to set up for me a use state hook i can call this test come here test give it the default value maybe it's a string and then of course i would have to import the actual use state hook and now i have state in my application if i wanted to have a use effect i can just do ue press tab it's going to set up for me a use effect and here i can just let copilot do its thing press tab again set up a dependency test set test save this import use effect and there we go just like that we have a use state and use effect using snippets i also have snippets for use callback ucb tab press use callback i also have them for use memo umm use memo it's going to set up for me a use memo and these are generally the four most common hooks that i usually use in my react applications and for these it was worth it to have their own snippets now also let's pretend that this is a new file so i'm going to just delete everything and let's say that i wanted to create a component from scratch all that i can do is just come here and press rjsfc for react javascript functional component and i have two options here one with props and one without props let me do the props one so i'll do props tab and then i can do here demo tab div div and there you go i have set up a simple functional component with props in typescript this is my snippet file for typescript react we have your console log which we haven't seen but i think it's pretty self-explanatory then we have use state use effect use callback use memo we've seen all of these and then we have our functional components i also have the async version of those components in case i'm working in next.js with server components these are really useful again i have a version without props and then a version with props and then here we've seen the normal ones just react function component and react function component with props and that's really it my snippet file is really small because these are the only hooks and pieces of code that i use often enough that warrant for me to have their own snippets anything else i don't use often enough or i don't use always in the same way so having a snippet doesn't actually make sense cool now let's move on the next two things that i'm going to talk about aren't necessarily vs code specific although you do have to configure your vs code to actually implement them and that is prettier and eslint so prettier and eslint are two different things prettier is a tool that you use to format your code to make sure that it follows the proper format and then eslint is a tool that you use not for formatting as a lot of people might think so but actually to make sure that your code follows certain rules so let's start with prettier let me just come here and make some new object i'm going to come and make a couple of spaces here to make this misaligned and then do const test object and that's going to have some properties here for example name test and then h12 i'm going to misalign these like so right this is horrible if you look at this code this is not proper code but the beauty is that when i press save it gets auto formatted and everything is indented correctly that's what prettier does you can mess up your code as much as you want you can put spaces you can put spaces here you can do whatever you want every time you press save it's going to save if everything is correct or if things are not correct at the bottom here you can see that i have an error because this is not valid javascript or typescript code if i just remove this press save my code is now correct and it's going to format it automatically that is the beauty of prettier one cool thing about prettier is the fact that you have this prettier rc file which is your configuration for prettier here i have all of the configuration for this project and the great thing about this is that this file is common for the project which means that every person every 
developer that's working on this application is going to have the same formatting when they save. That's the beauty of it. You have a configuration file. Everyone can agree on a set of rules and then they get applied to all of the project. Then we have ESLint, which as I've said, is not for formatting. Don't make the mistake to use ESLint as a formatter. That's what Prettier is for, but ESLint is there to make sure that your code follows certain rules. So for example, let me go here and look at our test object. It is currently underlined. It's warning us of something. It's warning us that test object is declared, but its value is never read. And as you can see here, this comes from ESLint, TypeScript ESLink, no unused parse. Just like Prettier, ESLint also has a configuration file. It's the ESLint RC. It's pretty similar. And here's where you put all of your configuration for ESLint. And you can see here, if I scroll down to the bottom, I have this rule, TypeScript ESLint, no unused parse, and I've set it to warn. This is what is triggering this warning here in our VS Code. If I was now to change this warn to put an error, and save and go back to our code. Now this is no longer throwing a warning, but it's actually throwing an error. The same error, this is declared, but its value is never read. But now this is an error, which means that, it, that if you have this running in a pipeline or something, your pipeline is not going to succeed unless you get rid of this error. I can also come back to the ESLintRC and instead of error, I can do off and that will just turn off this rule completely. And now my VS code or my pipeline is not going to complain that this variable is unused. And that's the beauty of using a tool like ESLint. You can set up your rules, make them make sense for the project, have everyone agree to them, and then everyone has the same standards. You can enforce this on safe. When you press save, you can have your VS Code automatically enforce these rules, and then you can also integrate them into the pipeline to essentially make sure that your project, that nothing gets committed, that doesn't follow these rules. Combine this with Prettier, and you have a very sol solid foundation for a React project. Then let's look at some of the extensions that I use. They are quite small, but they're generally small quality of life improvements which are really useful. The first one is pretty TypeScript errors. This is an extension that will make your TypeScript errors prettier and be more human readable in VS Code. If you've ever worked with TypeScript, you know that errors can be really difficult to read. There's an example here at the bottom, right? Let me just see it. It's right here. You often get errors like this, like this right here, which is really difficult to read. Here it's saying that type something is not assignable to some other type because there's a property missing. It's hard to read, and especially if you're new to TypeScript, this can get very overwhelming. What this extension is going to do, if I can just scroll up here, it's going to make the error a lot prettier to read. It's not actually going to change the error, right? The error is still going to be complicated because that's just the nature of TypeScript and we have to deal with it. But now at least you can see the actual type that is being used. That's the problem here. You can see what it's trying to get assigned to and what's wrong. Property user, it's properly highlighted, is missing in this type, which makes everything a lot easier to read and to work with. In practice, what this looks like, if I can just hover over this, this is the error here at the top that you would get without the extension. It's just plain text. You don't get any highlighting. And then here it's saying that test object is declared, but its value is never read. And then it's also putting me some piece of code here. This is really useful. This is of course a simple error. So it's not really apparent how valuable this extension is, but trust me, as you work with TypeScript, you're going to get a lot of these messy errors and having this extension is really clutch. Then we have another extension that I use that I discovered recently, it's really small. It does only one thing, but it's super, super useful. It's called multiple cursor case preserve. Essentially, it will preserve the case when editing with multiple cursors. If I can scroll down here, oftentimes in your code, you will have the same variable, but it's written differently with a different case. For example, in state, we're going to look at this in just a moment. And when you want to replace all of them, you would use VS Code to do command D or I think control D on Windows, select all of the elements and then replace them. But the problem with that is that the case is lost, right? Because VS Code is not smart enough to account for the case. This is extension fixes that. So let me show you an example of how this works. I'm going to clear this. I'm going to type US for you state, and then we can do something like test and then test. These have different cases. We're going to instantiate this to an empty string. We can even import you state or not. And now let's say that I wanted to replace test and put it with something else, right? I would do this and then I press command D to select the next occurrence. And then I can just write a new name, name, for example. And as you can see, it also replaced name here. It also replaced test with name, but it preserved the case. That's all this extension does. It'll just simply preserve your case when editing with multiple cursors, and it saves you a lot of time if you have to do this often in your React application. 
Then also in the same theme, there is another extension that again does only one thing, but it's super, super useful. And that is the template string converter. I'm showing you these because honestly, they are quality of life improvements and they've helped me out a lot as a React developer. This will essentially automatically convert a string to a template string whenever you type dollar sign and then curly braces, as you can see it here. Let me show you an actual example in the code because it'll make a lot more sense. Here we have this greeting, right, that I've add it to this code. And essentially, we want this now to include the name. So we have to do some string interpolation. How we would have to do this without the extension is come here and then replace this with a back tick, come here, replace this with a back tick as well, and then do name, like so. And this would get our greeting, it would be hello, and then the current name. With this extension, however, we don't have to do all of these manual steps, if I can just replace it to how it was before, all that we have to do is literally come in here, make a space and then directly type dollar sign curly braces. And then it's going to automatically convert this into backticks, which means that we can just put name here. And then we have it and it saves you just a little bit of time. If you do this often, which we do in react, we work a lot with string interpolations, passing prompts to queries and whatnot. This is really, really useful. It's a very small extension, it does only one thing but 300,000 people agree. It's a great extension. It's a really great quality of life improvement. Then let's talk about my favorite and arguably the most important extension that I have in VS Code. Unfortunately, this is not a free extension. This is something that you have to subscribe to monthly. And that is the GitHub Copilot extension. Having AI in your React application, in your VS Code, having OpenAI's AI is really, really useful. And the way that I use it, I use the chat version and then I toggle it by pressing Command Shift I. I can only assume that this is going to be control shift I on windows. And then I have here this little model that pops up and I can directly start typing. For example, explain this code. It's going to think for a bit and then it's going to explain the code. And the beauty of this is that it has context on my actual application. You see here, it knows about demo. It knows about the use state hook. It knows about name and set name. And then it knows about our greeting. It is context aware. It knows about my current file. It knows about my current selection. And it also knows about my project, which makes it really easy for me to ask it any questions that I want to have answered. This is so much better than using something like ChatGPT or BART or any other web interface, because this is directly integrated into VS Code and it's context aware. It knows about my files, my project, and as I've said, even my selection. I can select this, do Command Shift I, and then do what did I select and see what it comes up with. It should know that I selected the greeting. You selected the line of code that defines a greeting variable in a TypeScript React component. And then it's going to say a couple more things, right? This is really useful. You can actually change this to something else. Let's see what it comes up with. Here's an example of how you could change the greeting variable to something else, right? And here's the beauty. I have this button. I can either copy the code that it gave me or I can insert at cursor. And if I do that, it's going to essentially, if I can just close this, insert and replace my current selection. This is so much better than going to ChatGPT, copying and pasting. And it's also so much better than having this chat here, because for me, I don't like this. This isn't big enough. If the response of the AI of Copilot is really long, I'm going to have to scroll a lot. And to actually get it bigger, I have to, where is it? I have to come here and make it bigger like so, which I don't want because then I don't get to see my code, right? So I don't like using this chat interface. I actually much prefer using the command shift I because it pops up. I can ask it something. It already knows my selection, my current file, where I'm at, gives me the answer. I can just plug my answer in and then I don't have to worry about it. I can close this and get back to coding like a senior React developer. Cool. So there you go, guys. That was my VS Code setup. Now you can set up your VS Code as well and become a senior React developer. Now, disclaimer, this is not the only way to set up your VS Code for React, nor am I saying that this is the best way. This is simply the way that works for me, the way that I've come to after years of working with React pretty much every single day. If you enjoyed this video, you can of course click here to subscribe. It would really help me out a lot. You can also click here to watch a different video of mine. I'm sure that it's super, super awesome. And with that being said, my name has been Darius Cousin. This is Cousin Solutions. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Ciao, ciao.